Scottish nationhood, according to Nicola Finlips, is more than just a matter of history or a set of national institutions. It's about shared values and aspirations, and falls from the idea that the people of Scotland are a distinct political community. We've been reduced to a distinct political community. <laughs> begs fucking belief. Truly begs belief. Anybody can come to Scotland and be just as Scottish as a native Scot because native Scots don't exist in fact look at this photo for example. This is a Glaswegian and somebody from Aberdeen. <laughs> so anyway. Scottish Government's response to the call for evidence on salary thresholds and an Australian style points based immigration system. That's a big no no as far as Nicola Thinlips is concerned because she wants to diversify this continent or this country anyway. So it goes on to say Ministerial Forward Scotland is an open, outward looking and welcoming country. We recognise and highly value the remarkable contributions that people from around the world make. We are clear that inward migration brings huge benefits to Scotland, including critical contributions to our economy, yada yada. Uh, furthermore, we published our response to the committee on the review of the shortage occupation, which again set out the vital contributions and impact that people make from both other EU countries and from out with the EU, especially out with the EU. The government believes fundamentally the continuing freedom of movement is in the best interest of Scotland and the whole UK. The whole of the UK wants to see a reduction to immigration. Whether or not that ever occurs remains to be seen. But every step along the way, the Scottish fake National Party have tried their damnedest to not only thwart Brexit, but open the fucking floodgates to Scotland. Scotland's population needs a migration policy because you have done nothing. That and stared at this problem and with your cancerous social engineering policies, you allow it to worsen. Scotland is a aggressive fuck off you bald dick outward looking nation recognizing that migration strengthens society and the nation's benefit from the, and the nation benefits from the skills the experience the expertise of those individuals who have chosen to live work and study in Scotland inward migration including from across the EU including but not limited to has made an overwhelmingly positive contribution to the economy and society with migrants playing a vital part in ensuring that we remain a diverse and outward looking country and this and that is open to the world if you choose to prioritise Scotland remaining a diverse and outward looking country that's open to the world over ensuring that your people don't become a minority in your own homeland. The UK government is publicly committed to ending freedom of movement yet inward migration has helped to turn Scotland from a nation of emigration with a declining populace into a culturally diverse outward looking nation with a growing population. It's also brought benefits and opportunities to people born in Scotland with the government making it clear that it maintaining freedom of movement is in the best interest of the UK as a whole of Scotland. The government has provided detailed evidence to the Migration Advisory Committee in response to previous consultations setting out clear evidence of Scotland's distinct needs and an important role of migration in supporting our communities, economy and public services, supporting our communities. You're doing fuck all to support your communities. We published detailed evidence showing that EU migration is essential for ensuring sustainable population growth. Sustainable population growth. You just can't help yourself with that word, can you? But it's clear that the UK policy on migration does not meet Scotland's needs. This paper recommends that the UK government should abolish the net migration target or at least migration to Scotland, take a different approach to family migration improving the rights of people in Scotland to bring close family into the country with them, review the immigration skills charge which is an unhelpful burden on employers, give Scottish ministers a formal role in deciding on the Scottish shortage occupation list and reintroduce the post-study work fees as recommended by the Smith Commission. I'm not deluded enough to believe that if the government had enacted a programme and or several with the intention of increasing the birth rate all of our troubles would disappear. First and foremost, women aren't merely baby machines and it would take a hell of a lot more than implementing a few programs to change the mindsets of those who've fallen victim to the social engineering which, as far as I'm concerned, is the root cause of most of what we see today at present. All I've tried to do, to no avail, realistically, is make people understand that the problem that they claim migration will solve has been brought about by their inaction. And they've actually got the gall to call this an action unique circumstances. For the past 20 years since the Parliament's inception, the problem that they claim immigration will rectify was met with nothing other than an action. These circumstances aren't unique, they're deliberate. For at least 20 years, the government have had projections, for at least 20 years anyway, with the 2000 
UN replacement migration paper indicating that if the trends continued as they were, then the birth rates in multiple Western nations would drop to below replacement level. And wouldn't you know, 20 years on, and the trends have almost certainly continued. Self-evident what they're doing. Just look at what they did to the education system, for example. Scotland's education was once one of the world's best, but it's plummeted down the world ranking since they replaced it with their curriculum for exc excrement. And as previously mentioned, social engineering. And even now, if you want to excuse their past in action, what's to stop them talking about it now? Migration is crucial to growing the population. It's the only solution to growing the population, it seems. Why is that? <laughs> uh, where are we? This paper sets out the government's response to the evidence launched by the Migration Advisory Committee, yada yada. Despite these constraints and caveats, this paper provides evidence as set out below. Yada yada. UK government has suggested the adoption of an Australian points-based system. Australia does include regional flexibilities within its points-based system. The Australian government works with state and territory governments to offer a range of state-specific and regional migration initiatives, including varying criteria that recognises the specific needs of rural and regional areas, and is designed to address regional skill shortages, and to ensure that the intake of skilled migrants into Australia is spread across the country. These initiatives are designed to encourage migrants to settle in regions of low population density or economic growth. <laughs> there is some commonality here with Scotland's situation in relation to the rest of the UK because we've done fuck all. We need people to settle in Scotland instead of encouraging native births, instead of incentivising marriages, instead of promoting normality. We need people to settle in Scotland and considering the majority of European Union nations all have the same issue in relation to demographics, stands to reason you're going to have to go further afield. And it just so happens that all those human rights adaptations put in place, the red carpet will be well and truly ruled out for the African diaspora in due course. Diversity is a great key to strength after all. The demographic pressures in the rest of the UK are less pronounced and many communities, particularly in England, have larger migrant populations than are typically found in Scotland. I'm not going to say any more on that one, or have experienced more rapid growth in migrant populations than typically experienced in Scotland, which has led to different requirements for and perspectives towards migration across the UK. So you've seen the perspectives across the UK change as the migrant populations increase. You've seen communities turn into shitholes in some instances, London, Birmingham in certain areas, with large influxes of migration. And you look at that and you still wish to emulate it. The establishment of the Parliament reflected an acceptance of the need for a differentiated approach to policy making in Scotland. As the Migration Observatory notes in 2017, an immigration policy, Australia and Canada have full federal structures with democratically elected legislators and executives to manage such regional differentiation, therefore easier to envis uh, envisage such an approach in areas that already have devolved powers over other policy areas such as Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The existence of the Scottish Government and Parliament ensures that there are existing governance and accountability mechanisms to manage such policy differentiation. You know, even if there was an argument to be made to devolving immigration powers to the Scottish Government, there is no way in fuck I would ever give that ability to the SNP. No way. And that's not to take anything away from Westminster because I don't believe for one second that Boris Johnson is the saving grace that some are making him out to be. Westminster has just as much to blame as the SNP are to blame for the demographics or the shift in demographics that the UK is poised to set uh, is poised to see in the future. But I sure as fuck would not give any of those controls to Nicola Thinlips. In the expert advisory group, expert advisory group, my arse, on migration and population and future population projections clearly illustrate Scotland's distinctive challenges in relation to demography. <laughs> and again, you don't elaborate on what you what you mean by demography, because there's a bit more to it than referring to an aging population. Or, I stand corrected because they then go on to talk about an age structure of the population. So when you're talking about demography, I think we know what they're talking about, but they don't elaborate. It's so in your face. The ability of rural communities 
and the role of migration in helping to mitigate these challenges. The role of migration. How convenient. How very convenient. Policies and systems that might be appropriate for other parts of the UK are not appropriate for Scotland. Any move to an Australian points-based system must therefore include a commitment to regional differentiation and a tailored approach to migration policy for Scotland. A tailored approach. <laughs> not a plaster over your fucking inaction. Concerns that negative rhetoric in the UK against migration may already be having an impact both on the willingness of individuals already in Scotland to stay and those who may be interested in moving to Scotland. The government is committed to making it clear that we welcome those who make a positive contribution to Scotland and have developed our We Are Scotland campaign in social media to emphasise our positive position in migration. Our positive position. However, we know that some employers are already seeing a downturn in recruitment from the EU. I love how you refer to negative rhetoric in the UK when it was only a few paragraphs up from here. That England has seen much larger migrant populations than typically found in Scotland and has experienced more rapid growth in migrant populations than typically experienced in Scotland, leading to different requirements, etc, etc. So you acknowledge that in certain areas of England, there has been rapid growth of migration. And then a few paragraphs down, you then go on to acknowledge that there is a so-called negative rhetoric in the UK in relation to migration. And I wonder why that might be. Is it possible that the increase in growth in certain areas of England has led to the rhetoric? Till they look to press on ahead to emulate the likes of Sweden and London and Birmingham, etc. or France. Thing to note are they're continuously using Brexit as their excuse for the problems on the horizon. Rather clever little distraction from the fact that up until this point they've had EU freedom of movement at their disposal to date since its inception, or since we entered anyway. And they've not attracted enough people, nowhere near enough people, to at the very least stall or slow down the so-called process towards a demographic time bomb, quote unquote. <laughs> but they're now using Brexit as the excuse for why these problems are on the horizon. So what were these industries doing? What were these stakeholders doing in these sectors all doing up until this point? I presume they were all crying and moaning and whining and complaining as they are currently. But yet, in all the time that they were crying and moaning and whining and complaining, nothing was done. But now you get to use Brexit as the excuse. You now get to use Brexit as the justification for why you need control over immigration so you can personally step in and calm down those who are crying and whining and moaning and complaining. Another thing you'll come to find if you skim through the papers published by the Rainbow Unicorn Delegates is the fact that when they're talking about immigration and the need for devolved immigration powers, it's always EU nationals that they will refer to, or at the very least, 90% of the time, it's EU nationals. But, as I just said, up until this point, they've had the ability to attract EU nationals into the country. Westminster wasn't standing in their way. <laughs> so, stands to reason that the only thing that would be different if they were to get devolved immigration powers tomorrow, the only thing that would be different tomorrow than today is the fact that they would have the ability to attract people from further afield. And then when you take a step back and you look at everything that's been implemented into our legal system, everything that they're talking about and the people pulling their strings, it's self-evident that the African diaspora is heading to Scotland and that they've got the ability to give the go-ahead. <laughs> Initiated migration system for Rainbow Unicorn Lands could develop its own points-based system for recruiting. Along the lines of the Australian or Canadian decentralised systems being examined, schemes are well placed to cater for sub-national variations in demographic conditions, skills or shortages and could be targeted to promote the permanent settlement and integration of immigrants. This could offer a promising model for Rainbow Unicorn Land to address its distinct demographic layman's terms, rewarding them for their inaction with a solution that was predetermined long ago. I'm going after the islands of Scotland now, as they've unveiled just today their National Islands Plan. Page 18, population levels. Let's see how many times they refer to incentivising native births. Let's see how many times the birth rate gets mentioned at all. Population decline is a real threat to the sustainability. There's that fucking word again. Although not all of Scotland's island communities, over the last 10 years, almost twice as many islands have lost populations as have gained. Further population projections suggest that islands are set further risk of depopulation. 
in both Orkney and Shetland, both projected to lose 2.2% of their populace by 2041. A trend towards urbanisation has been experienced globally, tackling the drivers of this is complex but and provides an opportunity to consider innovative approaches. Depopulation sustainability has an adverse effect on community confidence and service sustainability, increasing the vulnerability of communities already experiencing higher costs of service provision and market access. The demographic issue for sparsely populated areas is not an access of older people but the relatively small number of children and young people. <laughs> Of serious implications for the workforce, the economy and the capacity for demographic regeneration. We rectify that issue. It's a mystery. This relatively small, the relatively small cohorts in the childbearing age group seem likely to spread to a decline unless counterbalanced by substantial net in migration. Take some of these so-called advisory experts and investigate these issues. Look into the fact that there isn't enough children being born. Look into why the small cohorts in the childbearing age group seem likely to lead to a spiral of decline. You explore options to try and rectify this issue, reverse the trend or even slow it down. Instead of talking about migration as your fucking